pretty good. And I don't even have a union card.
be a nurse. Where did I go wrong? I think I'll leave before you break out in hives. Alex? I'm scared to death. If it helps, I love you. That helps. Oh, the hell with my lipstick. <laughs> there. No more butterflies. I'm going to be wonderful. I've never doubted it. Alex, foolish question. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of power. I mean, people in the theater will do pretty much whatever you tell them to. Isn't that right? So I keep telling them. What if you're asking me to write the Chris? Oh, no, not at all. But I suppose you could keep somebody from working if you wanted to. Probably. If I was vindictive instead of the tender-hearted creature you've come to adore. What's this all about? Somebody put pepper in your face, Bella? Just wondering. Monica, you're serious. Why? Oh, Lord. The curlers. Did I tell my dresser to iron the costume for the second act? Alex, I gotta go. I love you, and how do you say it in the legitimate theater? Break a leg! Ten minutes to blast off. I've given my final notes. How's Monica? Traditional response. She's terrified. I've talked to our leading man. David's clear place on a shelf for a Tony. Good. Let him keep thinking he's the star. I just hope they do justice to the words. Boy, well, it's a nice little commercial comedy. Nothing cosmic. If we're a hit, fine. If we're not, we'll survive. I'm just grateful for a chance of directing you. Don't get Bob on me. He did a good job. Ladies and gentlemen, the call is two minutes. Two minutes, places, please. Well, that's it. Where are you going to watch it from? The back of the house or the wings? Watch? You gotta be kidding. That's cruel and unusual punishment. You see, Sally, I can't sit still and watch my own opening nights. It's too nerve-wracking. Those months, sometimes years of work. And if the critic has a stomach ache, or fight with his wife before the show, if he doesn't find it funny or dramatic or whatever, all that work is gone. So I wander. Backstage, outside, in front of the house, gentlemen's lounge. That night, I waited till the house was dark. Then I sneaked up the stairs, and when the curtain went up, I peeked through the curtain in the front box. The set looked nice. The actors knew the first ten lines of dialogue. I went down to the lobby, talked to the doorman. Then, when I couldn't stand it anymore, I went inside. <coughs> Bella Lamb, the producer, was standing in the back. Women should never be producers. Is it your nerves? It's my feet! Men producers can stand in the back and they don't have to wear high heels! <coughs> I went out again, down the street to a little coffee shop called Nora's. The coffee's broad, but we can always get a table. I talked to Nora. I had coffee. It tasted like Swiss cheese. <laughs> I came back. I sat in the men's lounge, writing the dialogue, whatever laughs there were. Suddenly I saw Lloyd. How's it going? <laughs> Lloyd was in no condition to tell me. I went out again. I was near the stage door when the first act broke, and Loretta, the stage manager, came over from spare. Alex! How can you be out here when everybody else is in there watching your baby needle? I'm trying to forget. How'd the first night go? It's not tell me. It went very well. A lot of laughs. I didn't hear that. I walked around the block. By the time I got back, most of the audience had gone back in for the second act. But Bella was still in the lobby. Come and watch, Alex. I'm gambling $600,000 on this show, and the least you can do is watch the opening. I gambled two years' of work, Bella. Take the night off. Speaking of gambling, what's this I hear about you and Monica and Meg Jones' column? Is it true? What Meg Jones lie? Amazing! It's a good thing. I was at every rehearsal and I didn't even know that you two were even... even... Keeping company? We were discreet. They didn't want to upset the apple cards. We were going to announce a party tonight. So that's why Monica wanted to have it on her apartment? Right. You'll be there? Oh, of course! Oh, oh it's act two! Oh, please, laugh at the business with the champagne bucket! I walked around the block again. And again. Eight times, maybe twelve, I don't know. Even the pain handler stopped asking me for money. The last time, when I got back, the critics were just rushing out to make their deadlines. I tried, as usual, to read their expressions. Pleased? Annoyed? They all looked like they had nothing in their mind but getting the cab. Inside, the cast were taking their bows. Karen Daniels. She had a small part of the second act and understudied the market. Leo Gibbs, the comic, and then our leading man, the ever popular David Matthews. There you are! Where were you when everyone was getting all the laughs from the scene with Karen? The audience loved Monica. 
Whether or not they liked the play, I couldn't tell. But they loved her, and she was radiant. Monica didn't even change. She left the theater immediately. She was giving the party, and she wanted to get out before those hordes of phony welchers stormed backstage. In five minutes, backstage was a zoo, a jungle. A publicity man had the national magazine he insisted I talk to, so by the time I got to Monica's, the party was already in full swing. It looked like the zoo had moved from backstage to Monica's living room. I didn't see Monica. The actress would buy the food, naturally. Isn't this wonderful? I keep bumping into famous people. They're rented for the evening, and they'll all disappear if the views are negative. But we're going to be a hit. The audience loved it. You're new to the theater, Karen. First lesson is never to confuse the audience with the groups. When will we hear about the reviews? Someone will film them, though. That's why she's in the kitchen. Did you? What's the point? Why the phone? They just been standing there, staring at the phone all evening. They didn't even eat. The Death Watch. It's better on his stomach. Where's Monica? Who is this? She put in an appearance. I guess she wants to make an entrance. Obviously, but it's a bit overdue. I'll go with her. I think that's the bedroom. No, Jerry, it's the study. The bedroom's beyond it. Want me to take those, Leo? Monica needs them. Monica! Monica? That you, Alex? Yes, come on out. Give me a minute. The natives are getting restless. They want to see the hostess. Sinking ship. 
How are you? Fair enough? I don't know yet. It hasn't really hit me. Alex, I don't care about the reviews. I think the play is terrific. Thanks, Leo. That's just what I wanted to hear. Nobody read the reviews, but they all seem to know. The pianist even stopped playing in mid-bar. There's nobody left but the caterers. I'm sorry. Don't be. You're amazing. I thought a few hits, so I can keep philosophical, more or less. But it's your first time out. You're being very stiff of her lip. Oh, I just wanted a success. But I care more about the playwright than the play. And my daddy told me never to marry an actress. Oh, sorry, Monica. I was just wondering if I could borrow an umbrella. It hasn't rained like this since John Houston filmed Noah's Ark sequence. Can't you get a cab? There's one parked across the street, but naturally, the idiot has his off duty sign on. Just what I love about New York. On the other hand, if we were filming a movie in California, there'd certainly be an earthquake. Sorry, David. I loaned Bella the last umbrella. Well, when your luck goes, it goes. After these notices, we might be using cold shower. Good night, again. Liam and I are coming too. Maybe if it's three against one, we can frighten a cabbie into taking us. We can try. Come on. I still love it. I'm awfully sorry. See you at the theater tomorrow. Sure you want me to leave? Of course I don't want you to leave. Then. But an actress has to prepare herself. So does a wife. So I'm going to go to bed and make a pot of tea and drink it. All right. Call you at 10 in the morning and wake you up. Will I give you enough time to get to the judges by now? Alex, do you love me? Very much. Why? I was such an idiot last week. Past history. You were angry. That's not much of an excuse. Missing a performance, stranding everybody, and that's not even the worst part. Monica, something wrong? Not if you love me. Get some rest. <laughs> The rain was torrential, the wind whipping it in sheets along the cross streets. It was a little more than a mile from my apartment house. When I was about half a block away, I could see an empty cab. He even slowed down as though to entice me. I guess I was the only passenger walking around New York that late at night. By the time I got to my apartment, I could hear the phone ringing from the corridor. Wait! Hold a minute! Hello? By the time I got back, there must have been five police cars in front of the building, and an ambulance. They were just lifting one of those stretcher things into it. Whoever, whatever was on it was completely covered. I tried to get through, tried to see. They, the cops wouldn't let me. They told me to go up to the apartment. There was a crowd in the lobby, neighbors I didn't know, some in robes, some in raincoats. An old man with a little dog. When I got up to the apartment, the door was open, the janitor was there. A police officer, a woman. I told her who I was, and she took me into the study. Somehow the caterers hadn't cleaned up their party. The living room was still a mess. There was another police officer in the study. He was on the phone. Well, Monica, that's right. Of course she was dead when we got here with a ten-story drop. Perhaps we better wait in the living room. This is Mr. Dennison, Mrs. Wells' fiancé. Oh, I'm sorry, too. No, her fiancé just came in. How did you happen to come by, sir? She called me. How long ago? Half hour, 40 minutes. Couldn't get a damn cat! Here, take this. No, thank you. Better have it, sir. You've had quite a shock. I really don't want it. She always made herself a pot of tea before she went to bed. She... She called me 30 or 40 minutes ago. All right, I'll talk to him. Call you back. Mr. Wells? Or Mr. Dennison, right? That is, Ms. Right, Mr. Dennis. Yes? Okay. Um, I believe Ms. Wells gave the party tonight, sir, right? Yes. You were here. So, I guess <clears throat> you would be the last person to see her alive. The caterers people were still here when I left. They were cleaning up. They didn't do much of a job. <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, the 
educators, people, they, it's their job. They have to clean up. What do you get at that? I'm saying Ms. Wells must have been depressed. She was not depressed. But Listen, maybe you should do this tomorrow. Talk to Lieutenant McElroy. No, I'm all right. Okay, so... Do you know of any reason why... Why what? Why Ms. Wells might want to take her own life? No! No reason! I do not believe Monica Wells would have killed herself! She left a note. A note? No, that's not possible. It's in the typewriter. Typewriter? Do you mind? Could, could you read it to me? It says, I'm sorry, but it's better this way. Off and on. 
Mostly on. I see spread. Must in touch. Not yet. We still have to wait for the rest of the cast. Cast? He's being mysterious. It's a playwright's prerogative, and it's a producer's prerogative to have a date in. <coughs> Would you get it to uh, near the station? There's a call for you, Mr. Dennison. Ernie! I thought you went home! I didn't feel right about leaving, Mr. Dennison. I told you it wasn't necessary to stay. I mean, it's my job to look after you. Ernie! I don't want you here! Is that clear enough? What? Go home. You're not needed. Okay, sure. Fine, Mr. Dennison. Whatever you say. I'm sorry, Ernie. I don't know what's the matter with me today. Here. Take this for your job. Oh, I can't do that, Mr. Dennison. <laughs> Don't forget about it. I'll call you when we're finished. It's a Mr. Shantoro. Alex seems off today. Not at all like himself. Well, wouldn't you be? I mean, this theater. And you realize it's been a year that, that the play was. I didn't think of that. I swear this coffee comes from Nora's. She's the only place I know that can make coffee that tastes like tuna fish. Fine, tell me if you park the truck in the alley by the stage truck. There you are, Alex. They said you disappeared. <coughs> no, welcome, Rio. To what? That's a good question. I know. This is all a plan to get me and Karen back together. Don't be ridiculous. Nobody told me you were going to be here. Does that mean you wouldn't have come? Hey, Alex wants me here. That's good enough for me. You're being obsequious, Leo. Okay, I'll stop. If you tell me what that word means. <laughs> Alex, don't you think it's time to get whatever this is started? It's not yet. Still one more to come. If I don't miss my guess, it's... Speaking of the devil. Sorry, I'm late. Somebody parked their car in the middle of 46th Street and they just went home. Lord, it's a rogue's gallery over here. We having a class reunion? Don't knock it. The man's passing out free food. Get some coffee, David, and we'll begin. Would you want to take seats and make yourself comfortable? No problem. They'll be here in half an hour. Fine. So, would you give them each one of the folders and then go set up the first scene? Sure. Is this what it's really like in show business? Nothing is what it's really like in show business. Leo, old friend, didn't you once tell me you went to medical school? You mean before I went wrong and became an actor? Yeah. Why? Because I have the king of all hangovers. <laughs> what do you prescribe? You're just dehydrated. Have some water. Well, only if it's a good year. Oh, there isn't any. Cock a lot to do. Comes from Norris. Tuna fish taste? No, this is more like a Western omelet. Would you two join the party? All right, Alex, you have the floor. I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'm very grateful. I know I've been in touch during the past year, but I'm sure you understand it's a difficult time. Where were you? I tried to call. I rented a house in the main woods and brooded. Six months and didn't touch a typewriter. The problem, naturally, was guilt. Guilt that I failed all of you, but mostly guilt of the wrong stuff. Alex, it wasn't your fault. She was depending on me to give her success. She needed more. When it didn't happen, she went through depression. Alex, no one could predict that sort of reaction. It was so extreme. Anyway, that's all we're done. The point is, I finally started a new play. Bravo. It's just bits and pieces, but it's coming together. So that's why we're here. I want to try it out, see how it looks on its feet. And naturally, I want your input. Why us? Call it making events. I've written a part for several of you. This is beginning to sound interesting. Lloyd, I'd like you to direct. And Bella, my sweet, you have first option, assuming you like it. Of course I'll like it. I've written the theater for the afternoon, so let's read some of the scenes, talk about it, and see what we've got. Oh, and by the way, something new for me. A mystery. That's great. Those do great. And if not, you can always sell them in television. Unusual for you take the audience by the hand and lead them in the wrong direction. They trust you, and you betray them. All in the name of surprise. Sort of turns us into chess pieces, doesn't it? And that bothers you, David? In a way. <laughs> the characters are always cardboard. I prefer the roles of more flesh and blood. I don't know about the flesh, David, but I can guarantee you the blood. What's it called? Killing Jessica. Sally! I like the title. Is Jessica the lead? Who plays her? Since I appear to be the only actress here... The role of Jessica is not exactly cast. But I have another part of mine for you, Kara. Oh. Don't worry, it's a good part. You'll have fun with it. These are unconnected scenes. As I said, Lloyd, bits and pieces. That's why I need help. Can you give us an overview? It's a play about another play, one that's in person. And Jessica? She's the leading role, a rather complex character. She made several films, mostly fluff. 
and she was embarrassed by all of them, so she walked away. She hibernated, she traveled. Then she decided to take a chance in the theater. She got the leading role in a Broadway production, moved to New York, and committed herself to a new career. She sounds familiar. Does she? Well, I was talking about that. Alex, if we can believe your title, this character, Jessica, someone kills her? Oh, yes, it's made to look like something else. But it's a murder. <laughs> David, by the you see, why not? You play the leading man, handsome, attractive to women type guy. <laughs> Sally, would you go to the light board and pull number three and number seven? This takes place in the middle of the first act. That is a sofa. The Am setting is your apartment. Am I heard? Several times, not her. You've invited Jessica over for a private person. You've told her it's common practice in the theater. And she believed me. She must know because she comes. If Karen's are going to read with me, who do I read with? Me, I'm afraid. You? You're in the imagination business, David. Give it a try. If it helps, why don't you think of, um, I don't know, Monica playing the title role? Monica? Actually, it's not a bad idea. Just pretend I'm not. But... Let's get started. At curtain, the doorbell rings. You're off stage. It rings again, and you enter. Coming, just a second. You reach the door, open it. Just think of Monica. She says, hi, am I early or late? Hi, am I early or late? Right on time, come in. Sorry about not doing this at your place, but I'm a bit under the weather. If you'd rather wait. No, no, this is too important. We have to protect ourselves. Oh, I hope that's an exaggeration. My dear, the director isn't up there in that space we are. And when something isn't working. Like act two, scene one. Among other pitfalls, something else to provide corrective surgery. Shouldn't we have told him we were rehearsing? Why? Well, He's the problem, not the cure. Drink? No thanks. I'm having some trouble with the transition. You have a genuine sense of dedication. It's refreshing. Well, thank you. I s that's why I'm glad we have this time to get to know each other better. I suppose that's why so many leading men and leading ladies establish a very close rapport. What do you think? I think we should work on the scene, really. There's plenty of time for that. Please. I... we're supposed to be rehearsing? Are we? This wasn't good. I think I'd better leave. Oh, wow, fuzz. This is perfectly natural. We work together every day. We play the love scenes. Please, let go of me. Oh, what the hell was that for? Just leave me alone. Listen, lady, you stopped in the face when I off the bustle. You agreed to come here. I didn't force you. All right, I was naive. I actually thought we were going to rehearse. Now, may I go home? I don't like being turned And down. I don't like somebody forcing his intentions on me, especially someone so unattractive, egocentric, and a bit too old for me. Now we're even. Hope it makes you feel better. Good night. Hope it makes you feel better. Good night. I'm sorry, Alice, but I just don't like it. And why is that, David? Well, first off, the part is much too old for me. And second, the man is totally unsympathetic. I would never come on like that. Oh, would you come on? Privileged information? No, I'm serious. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, you want to come on to, uh, Monica. Monica? Why do you keep mentioning Monica? She was one of your leading ladies, and you do have a certain reputation. Alex, what is this? Monica and I are friends, co-workers. Rehearsals can be an intimate process. I got the impression you were attracted to me. You were wrong. If you say so. But it's academic, isn't it? We're talking about the scene, and I thought you were excellent, David. Very convincing. Lights! Any comments? Don't be shy. What's the point of the scene? The point, Lloyd, is not a mystery. Everyone has never motive. You mean he kills her because she turns him down? I didn't say he's the culprit, Leo, but vanity can be a powerful force. Nobody will believe you. You don't commit murder just because somebody rejects you. No? But nobody had any trouble believing Monica took her life just because she was in a flood. That was different. Yes, of course it was, forgive me. Bill is right, but you need memories of this place. I think it'll help Sally change the set. We can continue. What's he getting at? What's he trying to prove? This is quite wrong, of course, but it's all I can find in the proper. It's meant to represent an elegant art gallery. Another set? This play is getting expensive. It'll all be done in the lighting, Bella. Very imaginative and very cheap. Lloyd, my dear, see one thing. Me? Why not Leo? I'm saving him for his own scene. Do you mind? It's it's act two, page two. Okay. What, who do I play? A director. 
more typecasting. It helps to give me a fix on the characters. Again, I'll read the part of Monica. Did I say Monica? I meant Jessica. And there should be a newspaper in the floor. The set is Madison Avenue Art Gallery. The gallery is empty. <coughs> Jessica wanders on. She is preoccupied, not really looking at anything. She needs a few moments of solitude before the rigors of opening night. Suddenly, she thinks she has passed something she should have looked at more closely, and she retraces her steps. She is completely unaware that anyone has entered the gallery. Not my taste. You startled me. Next time I'll clear my throat. Is it true? If you mean the column, That's then. exactly what I mean. Is it true? Yes. Congratulations. Things are looking up for you. The actress that marries the famous playwright, and they live happily ever after, with him writing star vehicles for her horse. That's a hostile thing I'm to say. I'm in a hostile mood. Comes with an understanding that I present with the director. And what understanding was that? Promises of things to come, all the sidelong glances, the body language, and requests for help on your part. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that standard procedure? Not the way you did it, and it served its purpose, all the tender loving care from the director. I think that's enough. You know, we never had a guy. Why don't we give it a shot? You're serious? I could be. <laughs> Why would I tie myself down to someone like you? No talent, no money, no fortune? What's in it for me? Lights! Major contradiction here, Alex. In what way? Your character. In one, she she's innocent and naive, and then next, she's as cold as ice. In many faces of Jessica. Besides, maybe that's just the way he sees her. It's not clear. Did she use him or didn't she? The important thing is that he thinks she did. Still better noted than my character. I don't agree. All right, Lloyd. When in doubt, touch base with Brielle. Let's take the case of you and Monica. What case? You were concentrating on her, giving her extra attention. That's not true. But suppose it was. Suppose you misinterpreted her professional needs for something more personal. And then to suddenly discover that she was going to marry another man. Alex, are we talking about the scene, or are we talking about Monica? Alex, we've known each other for a long time now, so I'm entitled to be blunt. Why are we here? You know why, though. To remind me play. This isn't a play. It's just a bunch of unconnected scenes uncomfortably close to the truth. The hell it is. She never came to my apartment. Who, David? Jessica or Monica? There is no Jessica in As for Monica. Yes. All we had was a professional relationship. Just like Lloyd? I don't know anything about that. I'm speaking for myself. If you're suggesting... Darlings! Darlings! We're all <coughs> friends here! I'm not so sure. Somebody please tell me what's going on. My segments exactly, Alex. What's going on? As you wish, Bella. Sit down and finish your coffee. I'll sit, but wild horse is going to get me to finish that coffee. <laughs> the truth, if you really want it, is that I am working on a new play. A murder mystery. Five suspects and an unknown killer. I hope it's me. Makes for a better part. Shut up, Leo. My, how things change. Don't you remember our rehearsals? We couldn't go behind if it's a senior without finding them locked in embrace. Time passes, David. Ingenues become leading ladies, and leading men become character actors. Please, please, children, children. Well, if we broke up, it's none of his business. But it could be mine. As a matter of fact, I've seen about it. You do? Alex, you're digressing. Very clever of you to notice, Bella. Always business. That's what your scene is about, by the way. Well, you're right, I really should come to the point. It's very simple. After we leave here today, who knows something we didn't know for? And what's that? Which one of you killed Monica Lewis? Which of us killed Monica? You're saying she was murdered! And accusing one of us of doing it! The man's crazy! We all know you've been away, Alex. Did you go on your own, or did they lock you up for a while? No, David, I'm quite sane. Then think about what you're saying, Alex. Monica committed suicide. She wasn't murdered, and to suggest that one of us was involved. I didn't suggest, fella. I made a statement of fact. They investigated! The police. The police were wrong. Alex, what you're saying here, it won't bring Monica back. It won't change things. Then you have nothing to lose by indulging me. Nothing to lose? What have we to gain? You bring us down here and make terrible accusations. Accusations of murder and expect us to just stand here politely and let you continue? You're a good playwright, Alex. You write good parts, but not that good. All I'm asking is... I know what you're asking. At least I think I do. I think you've got one hell of a nerve. Sorry. That doesn't class dismiss. Excuse me, Miss Daniels, but 
Don't you think you should reconsider? Who are you? We met last year after Miss Wells' suicide. I took a statement from you. Karen, you remember Lieutenant McElroy? McElroy? He was the investigating officer. I spoke to him myself. Well, what's he doing here? I asked him to come. Karen, would you do me a favor and come back on stage? You too, Doug. If you wouldn't mind, ma'am, it might be helpful. Not much to explain, ma'am, for Sir Denison asked me to be here today. He said he had new information on the death of Monica Wells. A moment ago you said suicide, not death. That's right, ma'am. It was a suicide. That's my view and the official determination of the medical examiner. Then the case is closed. Why are we wasting our time? Because the lieutenant is going to give me a hearing. That's an admirable trait, don't you think? I'll tell you what's not so admirable. You didn't tell us who was here. Mr. Denison asked me to keep out of sight. Thought I might end. I wonder why. He agreed to intervene if any of you tried to leave. But you can't keep us here against our will. No man is all unofficial. You're all perfectly free to leave. But then I'd have to wonder why you were so anxious to go. So we're back to what do we have to lose? Frankly, I think Mr. Denison's on a wild goose chase. I've told him that, but I'm willing to keep an open mind. It's up to you, Karen. As I said, you do write good parts. Perhaps you can forgive my little outburst and think of me next time you do? Thank you. It proves again the power of the pen. Now, I thought I'd get this arc back to the front room and help Sally set up the So we just wait, as actors always do. The puppets without the puppeteers. If we had any sense, we'd have all gone home. And maybe lose a part for next season? Shut up! I mean, what's wrong with Alex? A year ago, even at the funeral, he was fine. But now... A year's a long time. He's obsessed. No. There's a method to all this. He knows what he's doing. That's a charitable interpretation. You certainly right to you over the goals. That makes two of us. And we're next. Terrific. I don't know what he could accuse me of. Monica and I were friends. Help me. <coughs> if you're both so worried, why don't you read the play? What? Your scenes. They must be among the rest. For Look, for warrant is for arm. Right. Why are you going along with this nonsense, Lieutenant? Is it nonsense, Mr. Matthews? You know it is. <coughs> the department likes to be cooperative. Particularly when a celebrity is involved. You should know him, aren't you? You said it, sir. I didn't. What's he trying to prove? Does he actually suspect one of us? Nothing! No scene for us! Nothing with your names on it? Maybe we aren't going to do anything. After all the fuss he made about me staying. You won't be overlooked. Take my word for it. Your pages are probably hidden. Why would he do that? Part of keeping us all off balance. He may be obsessed, Leo, but he's thorough. Very thorough. Check in his attaché case. Yes, let's! I don't think you should. I don't care what you think. It's, it's me. Looking for something? My scene. I just wanted to read it through. I hate cold readings. I have the pages, Karen. Here. Oh. And yours, Leo. Actually, I'd like you to pay a scene together. You mean I don't have my own scene? You need all the help you can get. Isn't she wonderful? Right between the shoulder blades. It's easy. There's no backbone to get in the way. Sit down, both of you. Sully, would you bring me that telephone? Is that for our scene? No, I'm saving you. Giving you a big build-up. The next scene is Bella's. Me? I I'm not an actress. Sally, get set to the lights, please. Bella, indulge me. All producers are actresses. Just bring your chair along and sit at the table. It's just a simple phone call. Sally brought your script. The character will be a breeze for you. You're the producer of a play that's just open to mixed reviews. The after show party is over and you're at home. The man on the other side of the line is your accountant. It's all yours, Bo. Lights! Alex, I'm not sure I like this. What's the problem? 
It's only your blood. Hello, Harry. I was wondering about the amount of coverage. No, no, nothing specific. Just give me a ballpark figure. Mm hmm Yes, that's what I thought. Thank you, darling. Go back to sleep, Harry. Satisfied? Yes, Bella. Very realistic. You may have missed your goal. Listen, I know I'm a bit slow, but I have no idea what just happened. Let me enlighten you, sweetheart. What Alex is trying to say is that I was the sole investor in Chamber Peace. It was all my money. All your money? Well, <laughs> my husband's. What's the difference? So? So Bella stood to lose a small fortune. Possibly your husband. Unless... Unless, like the producer in this scene, I had insurance. And if I could keep the show open and the star failed to appear, I'd get the insurance money. Is that your drift, Alex? Only if you have that kind of coverage. Of course I had that kind of coverage. It's standard procedure. And Monica's death came at a convenient time for you. Whether you want to believe it or not, she threw herself in the terrace! How can you be so certain, Bella? Are you there? I get it! Alex is staging Hamlet. You flip it out, boys. Hamlet. Act two, scene two. The play within a play to catch his father's gun. I have heard that guilty creatures sing in the play, but the uh, very cunning of the scene have been struck to the soul that presentably proclaim their malfactions. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. That's interesting and all, but where's David? Do you think he went home? I need him here. He knows that. If he walked out, what's the fuss? He probably went to the men's room. I see someone in the wings. Hey, David. They thought you bailed out. Who are you? You know who I am. I know who you say you are. How about you show me some sort of identification? What's all this about? Whoever this man is, he is not Lieutenant Caldwell. <coughs> what? But I remember him. You think you do, but there's a resemblance. Same age, same build, but I'm pretty good with faces. And this is not the man I talked to after Monica died. Are you sure? I just called the police. Lieutenant McElroy died six months ago in the line of duty. Now, unless you're a ghost, you should probably start telling us who you really are. Well, they got me. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce a fellow professional, Mr. Frank Heller. He's an actor. And a very good one. Maybe not, Mr. Dennison. They nailed me. Nothing to do with your performance. <laughs> Unfortunately, David is too good a memory. So you're saying Alex hired you to impersonate Lieutenant McElroy? Yes, ma'am. But why? Very simple, Bella. In order for my little psychodrama to work, I had to keep all of you here. But given the nature of the situation, I was sure someone would try to leave. I needed, what shall I call it, official leverage. Of course. We might walk out on you, but never a cop. That was the idea. And since Lieutenant McElroy was no longer among the living. And since a real police officer would never cooperate. Exactly. I decided to hire a lookalike. Excuse me, David, an almost lookalike. Does he know how much trouble he's in? Wait, what do you mean, what trouble? Impersonating an officer is a felony. He never said he was a police officer. <laughs> I did. That's a technicality. If you're angry, David, blame me. Mr. Hellerus was following instructions. How did you get into this? You won't believe it, but I went to an audition. Uh, an audition? <laughs> my agent said that Alex Dennison was looking for an actor. Who am I saying no to that? Go on. Well, I went to the re re rehearsal hall, and there were maybe ten or other guys there. We all looked pretty much the same. Alex interviewed me, and that was that. Then a week later, he called me back, and there were three guys left. Then, there was just me. What happened whenever he told you what he wanted you to do? I thought he was crazy, accurate impression. Tell them the rest, Frank. At first I said, no. I mean, I never met Monica Wells, but <coughs> uh, everybody else, I read she committed suicide. But then, Alex told me things. He told me why she was murdered and who killed her. Did he now? And of course he offered you money. Yes, ma'am. How much? $10,000. $10,000? For a one-day pot. For that kind of money, I'd have had plastic surgery. Okay, okay, I admit, the money wasn't for it. You people know how it is. Actors have to scramble for jobs. I've attended bar, been a hard hat, even drove cab for a while. It's not much of a life. So when this came along... You don't have to apologize, Frank. Anyway, no hard feelings, I hope. I guess it's a... a leave. Not quite yet. No one leaves until we're finished. How do you plan on keeping us here? You don't have your phone in cop anymore. <laughs> and I pretty much have both of those. I'm sure we all have, Lloyd, but I think we should stay for a few minutes longer. What? On one condition. Alex tells us why he's so all-fired positive that Monica was murdered. I think that's your cue, Alex. Frank, I'll need your help. What do you want me to do? Be Lieutenant McElroy again. You've been over this. 
Give them the case for suicide. Well, there, were, there was no signs of a forced entry in her apartment. Correct. If she was killed by an intruder, how did he get in? And why wasn't anything stolen? The police found a thousand dollars in cash on the premises. He would have taken it. She knew her play was flawed. So she was despondent. She wrote a suicide note. Concrete proof of her intentions. She went to the bedroom, out on her terrace, and she hung uh, home. Say it! She jumped! In the words of the medical examiner's report, fall from behind. Case closed. But not for you. Nobody commits suicide because of bad reviews! It wasn't just the bad reviews, it was the end of a dream for her! Alex, you have to admit that sometimes she was, well, erratic. I mean, she walked out of a performance one night and I had to go on for her. Don't you remember? Yes, the police made quite a point of that. Monica Wells gets her into argument with the playwright just before a preview. She bolts from the theater, hails a cab, and goes home. She refuses to answer her phone, so we're forced to give a performance without her. A few hours later, she comes back to the theater and apologizes. Obviously proof of an unsound mind. Certainly proof of something. David, she was in love. She was struggling over whether or not to make a commitment. The tension was too much for her. She ran out, she came back. It was unprofessional, she admitted that. But it wasn't abnormal. Alex, I've been listening, and I'm not hearing any evidence of murder. She called me that night, asked me to come over. Is that the behavior of suicide? Maybe it was a cry for help. Then why did the line go down in the middle of a sentence? Because she changed her mind and hung up. She was under stress. She wasn't rational. She was rational enough to make herself a pot of tea. I saw it in the study. That's your evidence? A pot of tea? She was starting a new life, David. She had everything to live for. You saw her at the party. Was that a woman in despair? Alex, nobody can get into someone else's mind. Not even people we care about. Who knows what she was thinking that night? I know. She was thinking about the future. Alex, Alex, what Monica did was a terrible thing. Not only did she take her own life, but she rejected you. And you made this fantasy of a murder. In some strange way, it's easier for you to live with. I take it that means you're not going to hell. I don't know what else to do. Karen, Leo, will you play the last scene for me? Alex, Bella's bright. We're all your friends, but we're not getting anywhere with this. <clears throat> Leo, it's just a few pages. I'm sorry. Does anybody want to share a ride in town? Sure. Can you drop me off at 75th Street? Just a moment! <gasps> what the hell? Alex, for God's sake! Come back here, please. All right, fine, but do you need that? It seems I do! I need that for somebody to get to David, her. don't! He's bluffing. I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> hey, Alex, that's just a prop, right? That's not loaded. Don't try to find out, Leo. Now, I'm sorry. I want to ask you all to move very slowly to the center of the stage where I can see you. Very slowly! Which of you is Alex Dennis? I am. You are? Santora. Santora all moving in storage. Got your ship. Sally! Where's your truck, Mr. Santora? It's by the stage door. Want me to go on boat? Sally, could you show Mr. Santora where to put the things? Miss Bean will show you where everything goes. You got it. Just a minute! Yeah? Never mind. <laughs> okay. Actresses. <laughs> okay, guys. Dump it. Lloyd, will you move that table center? And David, move a few of the chairs downstage. Quickly, please. David. Frank, help me. Karen, Leo, come here, scene. You expect us to act? That's exactly what I expect. Alex has a gun. Really? Gee, show business is exciting. <laughs> Here's the floor plan. Make sure the women really fall away the exact. Everybody ready? All right, fine, but can you please put that away? All right, in the interest of calming your nerves, but I'll keep it handy. Karen, the scene takes place in your dressing room. That is a dressing table. Leo, you may carry chips in a few moments. Ready? No. But you'll try. Won't you? Sit at the table. I don't think we'll bother with lights for this scene. Again, I'll read the part of Monica. The scene starts with a knock at the door. Yes? Hello, it's Monica. Monica? Yes, may I come in? May I come in? Yes, of course. Not in makeup yet? Oh. 
Oh, I won't put it on for another hour or so. I was just sitting here soaking up the atmosphere. And you're not quite sure which makeup to use, are you? Pardon? I mean, if I got sick last minute, you'd have to play my part. But you were quite good when you went on for me last week. Never even crossed my mind. Nobody gets sick at, at the, on opening night. No, I suppose not. But like I said, you were quite good when you went on for me last week. The audience was disappointed. I tried my best, but there's no comparison. You're just being modest. Well, it doesn't much matter, does it? I mean, you're here. That seems to surprise you. Why would I be surprised? I brought your tea back. You know, the special blend your grandmother whips up in our country kitchen. Didn't you like it? It really calms me down. So you said, have some before opening night. Wonderful for the nerves. It is, maybe, but not so good for the rest of the body. I don't know what you mean. Then let me see if I can make myself clear. Since you practically forced the tea on me and your motives are somewhat transparent, I asked my doctor to send a sample to a lab. A, a lab? I learned a marvelous new word, cyclophosphamide. It's an alkylating agent. Odd thing to find in your grandmother's recipe. There must be some mistake. It causes dizziness and nausea. A few sips and I'd be at home and you'd know which makeup to use. Monica. You weren't even willing to pay your dues, were you? Karen, I... Oops, I didn't know you had company. Hi, Monica. This is private, Leo. Not at all. Stay, Leo. The three of us should have a talk. About what? I don't know. Opening night? Helping your wife's career? Huh? Or should we talk about chemistry? And college? You did take chemistry courses, didn't you? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Why? What's this about? She knows. She knows what? About this, she had it analyzed. Oh, brother. All right, so we spiked your tea. It wouldn't have hurt you, just slowed you down for the night. The question is, what are you going to do? I told you we shouldn't do it. You wouldn't listen. Be quiet! They send people to jail for things like this. Excuse me, Mr. Dennison, we're finished. We'll be back in the morning to get this out. Fine, thank you. Ready to see the set for the last scene? Alex, I want you to know the scene we just played was nothing but lies. You did bring her to you, she told me. But it was a gift and there was nothing in it. What good would it do me anyway? Bella would never open with an understudy. Hmm. Would you, Bella, or would you send everyone home at the last minute? Critics? The press? I wonder. Alex, use your head. Even if Karen's nuts, I'm not. I never help her with something like that. You were trying to save your marriage. You'd have done anything she wanted. No way. Alex, if there's another scene, let's just get on with it. The voice of reason. At least one of us is rational. Just strike that table, please, David. Sally, get ready on the curtain. Looks like a real show. Everyone ready? Yes. Go ahead, Sally. Oh, Lord, that's Monica's apartment. Very good, Karen. Her study, the scene of the crime. But how? Her furniture was in storage. I had it brought here today to interest in realism. I'm sorry, what was is this? The original? No, the police have it in their files. Everything is exactly as it was. The tray of liquor, the pot of tea, the contents of the drawer, even our champagne glasses. I wouldn't, David. Monica didn't smoke. There are no ashtrays. Karen, that chair is out of position. Move it stage right, will you? Me off your list. I didn't even want to go home. I went to an after hours club. I was there until four in the morning. I must have at least 20 witnesses. And I was with my agents. We went back to my place and commiserated. Bella? My husband and I took Meg Jones, the columnist, home. And she asked us up and we talked for hours. I thought I'd give us a mention in the column. We needed all the publicity we could get. Kara, that leaves you and Leo. Easy. As you keep reminding us, we were married then. We went home to bed. Seems like we're all accounted for, Alex. Then who was Monica planning to meet the night of the murder? Who said she was planning to meet anyone? She sent me home, Lloyd. On the one night I should have stayed. She also got rid of the caterers. Didn't even give them a chance to clean up. No. She was expecting someone. So she sent you home because somebody else was coming? It explains the circumstances, doesn't it? After I left, she let him in. 
him or her, and they had some kind of argument, she called me. He grabbed the phone and hung up. I think there was a struggle. She was struck with it. And where did all this happen? Right here in the study. Why not in the bedroom or in the living room? Let's see, Bella. She brought it in here. We're back to that again? She was upset. Maybe she just forgot. Well, washed, David. Not too upset to make a pot of tea, but too upset to drink it? Then the lights were on. They were all on when the police came in. And the door was open. Meaning? Suicide is a private act. She called me. I might come and stop her. She knew I had a key. So first, chain the front door. And secondly, close and lock the bedroom door. But she didn't. After the party, she was never in the bedroom alive. So your imaginary murderer carries her to the terrace and just throws her off. Why not? Instead of an unexplained corpse, he creates a suicide. And the note? He searches. Finds a piece of her stationery in here. What about fingerprints? Gloves. Handkerchief. He presses this to her fingers, then rolls it on typewriter. Her prints are on it. He's not. Very ingenious, Alex, but even if you're right, even if someone did kill Monica, it wasn't any of us unless you don't believe one of our alibis. On the contrary, Bella, I had a private firm of detectives to check them out. And most of them not. Most of them. Three of you were with witnesses who Monica died. David, you were at the club. Lloyd, you were with your agents. And Bella, you were with my Jones. Now hold on. But you and Karen, Leo, you two only on the by each other. We were together! Oh, we have only your word for that. What are you saying? There are five monarchs here, all hypothetical. But one of them is real. It's a matter of record. Read it. It's a chemical analysis sent in of a tea sample sent in by Monica Wells in April of last year. What does it say? It says the sample was saturated in, uh, I can't even pronounce it, but it causes illness and incapacitation. I found that among her effects. It's a fake! It looks genuine to me. Easy enough to check. One legitimate motive, two unsupported alibis. I'm not going to listen to this! She found out what you were doing. What did you plead with her? Asked to see her after the show. I never went back to Then who did? I don't know, maybe Leo! What you were with, Leo. Not the whole time! What are you trying to do to me? Well, it's true. You couldn't sleep and you wanted to take a walk. How long was he gone, Karen? I don't know. 20 minutes? An hour? No alibi, Leo. And a motive. Hey! This is crazy! Don't tell me any of you believe this. Alright, I took a walk. Is that some sort of crime? If I don't have an alibi, neither does she. It just doesn't matter, Leo. Why the hell doesn't it? Because Monica was killed in here. The murderer had to carry her under the terrace, lift her over the rail. And as you all saw, Karen couldn't even lift that chair. You killed her, Leo! She killed herself! I'm getting out of here. Her whole life ahead of her. And you're killing her! Alex, take it easy! Come back here, Leo. I'm not going to listen to any Leo, of this. Leo, listen to him. I'm warning you. Alex. Alex. Alex, no! You 
had motives. Afraid of not. You! You want her out of the way. You mean grandmother's tea? No such concoction. It was all part of the script. Script? Listen carefully, Frank. Nothing you saw here today was real. Nothing. The scenes we played, the arguments, they all came out of my typewriter. With a little information from my friends. I thought we were terrific. This is crazy. As for the motives, we invented them. Karen and Leo were never married. At least, not to each other. How's your wife, Leo? She's pregnant again. <laughs> David and Monica were close friends. Her relationship with Lloyd was strictly professional. I'd never put my own money into a play, especially not my husband's. He'd kill me. Oh, almost forgot. Here's your lighter back. You kept it. Wouldn't do if you'd have a lighter in your pocket, Frank. None have gone for the flashlight. Then this whole thing was staged. For an audience of one. Blanks? The auditions? Hire me to play a cop? Hall just an excuse to get you here. We had to make you participate. We even recreated her study, so you'd be back where you were a year ago. And we agreed. I pulled the lights. How'd you know about me and Monica? I didn't at first, but it was obvious you expected someone that night. But why me? Out of everyone in New York! Earlier that evening, she asked me if I could keep someone from working. I thought it was a strange thing to say. Then later, she was counting money. A thousand dollars. So? So it suddenly occurred to me it might be black. <laughs> Maybe she was paying someone off. But that still doesn't explain. A thousand isn't much. Who would she think she could pay off for that kind of money? And who could Alex Dennison, a successful playwright, keep him working? An actor, naturally. If there was a blackmailer and he was coming for a payoff, he probably waited until her party was over. And it was raining that night. Alex remembered there was a cab parked across the street with an off duty sign on. I oh, complained about it. I also remember the night Monica ran out of here during previews. She took a cab. And we all know the cliché about out-of-work actors driving taxis. In fact, Mr. Heller, you said yourself that you drove one for a while. All the cab companies keep record of pickups and deliveries. It seems that Mr. Frank Heller took a fare from this theater to Monica's address the afternoon of our fight. He also had his cab out the night of the murder, with no recorded fares. But why did you go to the police? With what? Suspicions? No. We had to prove you were in Monica's apartment the night she died. And since we're all creatures of the theater... You decided to do a number on me. You were good. You were all good. What happened that night, Frank? That's right. Without me, you'd have a second act finished. <coughs> I was parked across the street, waiting for her to leave. The party broke up early. Some of the guests even tried to get me to take them somewhere in the rain. I was tense. I had a few drinks, and just sitting there was driving me crazy. Then, she sent the caterers home, and I went up. She was expecting me. She opened the door and she had a tray of tea and things. Hi, Monica. Going to the study. Not even a hello, Monica? Through that door. How were the reviews? You don't give a damn about the reviews. Okay, no polite conversation. If you want to get down to business, we can get down to business. But you were a lot friendlier the last time I was here. This isn't the last time. Frank, I want you to understand something. I was angry with Alex. He opened up some emotions I didn't know I had. And like a fool, I guessed I wanted to punish him. So when I got in your cab that day... I couldn't believe it. Monica Wells coming on to me, inviting me up for a drink. I was using you, or at least in that crazy moment I planned to. Some nutty idea of making Alex jealous. But I came to my senses, and I asked you to leave. Nothing happened. But he doesn't know that. We were together for hours. You even missed a performance. You think he's going to believe that I picked up a cab driver and let him make love to me? Maybe. Maybe not. But I'm willing to bet you'd pay a few bucks to forget the whole thing. Nuisance value. Call me if you like. Look, what have I got going for me? I've been an actor for 15 years, and I'm driving a cab! I need a stake, something to get me moving again. So I opened the paper this morning. You saw Alex and I were getting married. I figured he was a lucky man. Why shouldn't I be lucky too? Frank, I got you into this. I owe you something. If you walk away now, I won't mention your name to anyone. Sorry. What are you doing? I went to the bank today. Even got out a thousand dollars. You were talking about a lot more than that. Doesn't matter, Frank, because you're not getting any of it. Oh? I decided tonight, even if you called it off, I'd still tell Alice the truth. Not very smart, especially right before the wedding. As you said, maybe he'll forgive me, maybe he won't. Either way, he's not going to forgive a blackmail. Now wait. I wouldn't want to be you, Frank. He has a lot of friends. Alex, I know how awful it is out, but can you possibly come back? Right now, please. Alex, it's terribly important. I did what I... Do you know what you're doing? I think so. You're going to ruin things for yourself. Why don't we wait and see? I'm sure he'd like...
like to meet you. Don't answer it. I said, don't answer it. Monica? Monica! I, I called her name. I tried to revive her. I, I even took her pulse. I could feel it flickering for a few seconds, and then it was gone. When I realized she was dead, I didn't know what to do. So you manufactured a suicide? I didn't want a murder investigation. I cleaned away her blood from the corner of the desk. I carried her into the bedroom and you know the rest. Look, I've been living with this for a long time. And I did what I did. But for whatever it's worth, it was an accident. I didn't mean to kill her. You there, Loretta? Here, Alex. And the lieutenant? Up in the sound booth. He's on his way down. Who's that? Frank, meet the man you impersonated. But he, but he said he was killed in the line of duty. I believe that was the dialogue delivered by me with my well-known credibility. Thank you for coming. It's a good thing I did. Looks like I owe you an apology. Not really. I didn't have any proof. Consider me a convert. You've done our work for us. I don't look like him at all. We had to give you a reason for being here, Frank. One you to leave. Alex. If you ever write a play about this, at least I gave you an ending. Come along, Mr. Heller. Thank you. All of you. I never thought it would work. Especially with me. I kept thinking I'd blow my lines. You know, Bella, I hate to admit it, but you weren't half bad. I mean, for a non-pro. You know, there's just one thing I don't understand. Why did he go along with it in the first place? Frank Heller? Yeah. You promised him a lot of money. So it was a trap for Leo. That made me feel safe. He put on the wrong guy and stopped looking. But still, he knew he killed Monica. Why get involved in the first place? For odd reason, Lloyd. He's an actor. I was offering him a wonderful part. Darlings, it's all over now and it's been all too exhausting. I think we all deserve to go down the street to Nora's and have some of her revolting coffee. Who's paying? It's the producer who always pays. Sydney, please. 